now in this part we'll be looking at it some of its major attachments of muscles and ligaments over the scapula so on this anterior surface this subscapular fossa we have the attachment of subscapularis muscles it is from the medial two-third of the subscapular fossa it is basically a multipinnate muscle then on the medial and the inferior angle there is a attachment of the serratus anterior muscle now if we look uh, posteriorly on the dorsal convex surface dorsal there is attachment of supraspinatus muscle which arises from the medial two-third of the supraspinous fossa and there is attachment of the infraspinatus muscle which arises from the from this medial two-third part of the infraspinous fossa then there is attachment of the teres minor which arises from the upper two-third of the lateral border which is uh, interrupted by the circumflex scapular artery then there is uh, attachment of the teres major muscle which arises from the lower one-third of the dorsal surface of the lateral border and from the inferior angle there arises a small slip of the latissimus dorsi muscle now if we look on the superior border of the scapula we'll find a scapular notch and both the superior transverse ligament is ossified and this will form the suprascapular foramen and above this above this ligament there will be dilation of the suprascapular artery and below this there will be and they will pass a suprascapular nerve and on the superior border near the suprascapular notch it will give attachment to the inferior belly of omohyoid muscle we look on the lateral border of the scapula we'll find the infraglenoid tubercle this part is the infraglenoid tubercle this is just present below the glenoid fossa and this and from here arises the long head of triceps muscle now if we look at the vertebral border or the medial border of the scapula and above this lateral side we have this glenoid cavity a fibrocartilaginous rim that is the glenoid labrum it is attached over to the margins of this glenoid cavity over these margins to deepen the concavity of this of this fossa now there is also the attachment of capsule that is attached just to the margins of the glenoid cavity and proximal to the attachment of the labrum so we have attachment of the labrum then there is attachment of the capsule of the shoulder joint along its rim then there arises a long head of the biceps brachii from the supraglenoid tubercle this part is known as a supraglenoid tubercle this is a, this part is superior to the glenoid cavity and you must also know here that this uh, origin of the long head of biceps brachii uh, from the supraglenoid tubercle is intracapsular it is it forms within the capsule of the uh, of the shoulder joint now if we look at the spine of the scapula the uh, trapezius muscle is inserted to the upper lip of the crest of the spine on this part and while the posterior fibers of the deltoid takes origin from the lower lip of the spine of the scapula moving on to the acromion the acromion process this acromion process it this uh, it have a facet this will be getting attached to the lateral end of the, of the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint now this have got a medial border and a lateral border the lateral border will give the origin to the intermediate fibers of the deltoid muscle and the medial side will give insertion to the trapezius muscle and on the tip of the acromion there is there will be attachment of the coracoacromial ligament now moving on to the coracoid process 
this part this hole will be giving attachment to the three muscles that is the short head of biceps brachii crocobrachialis and uh, the pectoralis minor and three ligaments that are the coracoacromial ligament coracoclavicular ligament and the coracohumeral ligament so now we look at the first that is the sh now firstly we look at the short head of biceps brachii and crocobrachialis this arises from the tip of this by a common tendon then comes pectoralis minor muscle which is inserted on the medial border of the upper surface here this will be giving attachment and insertion to the pectoralis minor then comes the coracoacromial ligament that is attached to its lateral border on its lateral border you will find the attachment of the coracoacromial ligament then conoid part of the coracoclavicular ligament is attached to its knuckle over here and the trapezoid part of the coracoclavicular ligament is attached to the superior most superior region of this part and this will give attachment to the coracoclavicular ligament uh, trapezoid part and then there will be on its knuckle part it will give attachment to the conoid part of the coracoclavicular ligament and the last the coracohumeral ligament will be attached to the root of the glenoid cavity here so these were some of its attachments of the muscles and ligaments thanks for watching